Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing good and staying safe like always. Today I'm going to be answering all of the questions that you guys have dropped on the AMI sticker that I shared on my Instagram story and responding to all of the questions and queries related to Femina Miss India 2023. I know this is a highly requested video and it's high time that we get all of our doubts resolved. And so without wasting any time, I'm going to jump straight into the several queries that I have received on my phone. has been asked by Jashnavi Mandala. She is a student at December 2022 batch at Conquer as well. Uh, I haven't gotten to interact with her yet but I do see her picture and name here. So she is asking can we send an on-stage picture from the previous pageant with just the contestant badge. I believe that I did cover this query in fact in my previous video as well. The answer to this question is I don't recommend it because of an organizational conflict that might happen. One thing that I do teach during for instance the personal introduction session at Conquer is that even if you want to list out your prior pageant experience and achievements and mention them during your pageant personal introduction round, what you should keep in mind is try not to take the name of the pageant while you're competing in another pageant because you have to understand that as a title holder your job is to promote that pageant only and when you take the name of another pageant it just goes on to show that there's a lack of maturity and maybe you don't really understand your duties that well. Think of it this way as an influencer, advertiser or content creator if you are promoting one product at one time then you are always recommended to not have competing products in the same advertising content itself, right? Because it's gonna take down the impact and ruin the overall agenda of that content, correct? So the same thing holds true for your pageant as well. So when you're trying to become the face of one organization, it's never recommended to go and use your pictures that actually end up promoting another organization, even if those pictures are not going to be visible to the public audience. The next question is something that I feel a lot of people will relate to and this person is asking, should I go for it even though I don't feel like I'm fully prepared? Now, this decision I would suggest is a very personal and individual one. It depends on how old you are. Do you think you have another four or five years of attempts left based on your age? Um, also, do you have the resources? Because even in order to just participate and you know, even if you're not fully prepared, you just wanna go and see and feel how things are. It still involves a lot of time and investment and energy to get your height certificate, to get your videos filmed. If you feel like you are willing to put in that energy despite not being a serious candidate, knowing that you're not fully prepared, then I would say go ahead and do it if you have that much bandwidth. But at the same time, I also want to say that the Femina team, at least what I noticed is because back in 2018, I competed and I was not selected in the very first round itself. I had not been trained. I was not prepared as a candidate myself that year. When I went back in 2019, while I did end up becoming a state winner, but at the same time, I was um, reached out to by one of the team members and she did tell me that she remembered me from 2018. And I've noticed this happen every year that the pageant organization does remember faces and they do remember girls. So if you've caught their eye, so what really matters is the first impression that you're going to make. And so it's not to say that your first impression will not be good because you're not fully prepared, but the next time you show up in the pageant audition, they're going to be comparing you to your previous performance. And so the performance that you give the very first time you compete, if you're not fully prepared, then you have to make sure that the delta and the growth in your performance is very, very significant when you go and compete the next time and that's when you're actually fully prepared. And so that is the reason why a lot of candidates actually wait for two to three years and fully prepare themselves and then only go because they don't want to take those chances. The next question that I find very important to cover is asked by Raj Lakshmi is beauty with a purpose project needed when you go for the audition round. Now this question can be actually answered in a very elaborate manner but I would say that you should have a very good clarity on what you would want to do with the platform 
what is your reason for competing in the pageant and at the same time what is your purpose for competing in the pageant and those two things are not the same thing they are very different words and they have different meanings as well however if you are asked about what would be your beauty with a purpose project you should be able to talk about it you should at least have a blueprint idea of what you would be doing provided you win the title and you have the platform and the resources but do you have to go into all the details and present your project no and at the same time make sure that your personal introduction does not talk about your beauty with a purpose so much that it becomes more about your project and less about you that's not what you have to do either but should you have absolutely no idea what your bwap is going to be that's not a good approach either so you have to find a good balance and make sure that in the background you are continuing to work on your project because that's something you are doing regardless of whether or not you make it in the pageant before moving on and answering further questions i quickly want to take a moment to thank ayuga for sponsoring this portion of the video you guys know i have been loving the brand ayuga i've spoken about it in my product empties video i've spoken about it on social media and i've been using the products for the last 6 to 8 months in fact since the beginning of this year and i have finished all of the products and reordered them as well so i'm extremely happy to be working with the brand one more time the brand ayoga comes from the words ayurveda as well as yoga and it is based on the deep knowledge of 5000 years of ayurveda as well as yoga and the principles are holistic wellness and a sense of balance i love that they also mention the ayurveda text from which the recipe has been derived so it does mention that it's been taken from ashtanga hridayam and the ingredients are to die for in this 100% kumkumadi skin radiance face oil and i tell you they are not joking when they talk about skin radiance i have been using the product every single night it does fade your dark spots it moisturizes your skin and is a pretty good substitute for moisturizer as well in my opinion the ingredients include sesame oil manjista powder saffron oil goat milk sandalwood extract rose petals lotus extract and so many more really good ingredients for your skin ayuga is really safe to use as you can see the packaging clearly mentions that they are made using usdca certified products they are made safe certified and peta certified as well and cruelty free which is amazing and the usp for the ayuga brand is that every single product has a qr code on their packaging which you can scan in order to learn the best face yoga ritual that will provide you with the maximum benefits of this product so you can use the squeeze face yoga tapping asana to get the maximum benefit out of the 100% kumkumadi face oil and also it does mention the percentage of the ingredient as well so this mentions that it has a 100% kumkumadi the oil is not super greasy and does absorb into your skin within a matter of a few minutes and you do wake up with a very radiant skin glow if you are interested in checking out these products then you can find them on the ayuga website or even on amazon and flipkart where you can use the coupon code given below to get an additional 15% off The next question is regarding the VLCC Height Certificate Center. How do you find the center and how much do they charge? So like I mentioned in my previous video once again, there is a helpline number available on the form itself. Give them a call, find out your nearest center. There are centers in Hyderabad because this person is from Hyderabad herself and the VLCC Height Certificate and Fitness Certificate is free of cost. They do not charge you at all. The next question has to do with the full name criteria. Rashmi Rathi has asked the form needs both your first name as well as your last name but i only have my name which is her first name in my document so what should i do do i enter miss rashmi or do i enter rashmi rashmi that's a pretty good question rashmi actually what i would just suggest is even though you don't have your last name officially written on your documents you would still have a last name so you can just add in your father's surname and that would work in the application form in the meantime I would say that do apply to get your last name added to your documents and the reason for that is because when you are applying to become a public figure it's extremely important for you to actually have a last name in fact i've seen that after some contestants have won even their middle names gets added to their instagram bio and their profile has to be really really complete so they do care about what your full name is because just rashmi cannot be miss india it has to be rashmi something so make sure that you start that application process and in the meantime just add in your father's surname 
or your mother's surname, whatever your personal preference is, whatever you're going to actually have in the documents, add that in the application form as well. The next question is from Vandana Nair and she is asking, can we win even without any institutes? I think I've covered this question and spoken about it so many times and I don't know why so many people have this question, especially when it comes to beauty pageants, but it's like asking, can I get a good rank in IIT JE without taking coaching from any institute? The answer is it does depend on you. Maybe you need training, maybe you need the extra guidance and coaching and assistance because they really prep you for what the actual competitive exam is like. But is it impossible to get a good rank in the exam without coaching centers? It is possible, provided you put in the hours and you put in the work for it. And the same holds true for beauty pageants as well. The reason coaching institutes are actually so spoken about when it comes to the pageant field is because of the number of seats, which are very, very limited. When you apply for these engineering exams, there are thousands of seats available across the country. The same is not true. In the case of beauty pageants, only 31 contestants get selected from all across the country. And if there are, say, over a thousand girls taking training at any point in the country, then they just have higher chances of making it to the competition. But that doesn't mean that there are girls who don't make it to the finale without any training. If you have a look at the batch of 2022 itself, the entire batch had not gone from grooming institutes. Um, I think around 40% of the batch had come from training institutes only. So I actually did do that research and survey. And so it's not impossible, but it helps if you have guidance, because if you're completely new to this field and you don't know what to expect, having taken mentorship would just make you feel a lot more prepared. I love this next question. Do you have any expectations from your students that you will also have contestants like Pragna and Likhita this year? Fingers crossed, I will share this that personally I have my notes and I know which student is competing from what state. And so I do have my predictions in a way, but at the same time, I am just focusing on making sure that every single student ends up giving their best performance ever in the competition for the same reason we actually will be conducting mock interviews as well up till the zonal audition interview time as well for all the students who are competing for Femina Miss India this year and the same process was actually followed last year as well. I think eventually in the end it all boils down to who is the most sincere and who is most liked by the organization as well because sometimes it's there is a small, small factor of luck as well and the organization just likes a contestant and they see a lot of potential in the girl. So a combination of those two factors is what makes a result. The next question is an interesting one. Saranya is asking all the three states are the same for me. So can I submit the same proof for all three states? If you saw my previous video, you would have seen the screenshot of the guidelines that are written very explicitly in the website and form itself. And so the proof for your current state, native state and birth state, the type of documents that are allowed in each category is different. I would say go ahead and stick to the rules itself. Don't be lazy. I think that's just what I want to say. I know maybe all three states are same for you, but why don't you just stick to the rules and, you know, make sure that you don't give them a reason to not shortlist your profile because of just because of the way you were inconsiderate when it came to the rules of application itself. Another important question that is asked by someone named Bharadwaj Gul is will we be allowed to give answers in a mixed language of Hindi and English? I actually responded to a similar comment on one of my YouTube videos as well. And so if you are not fluent in English, then I would suggest that you stick to Shuddh Hindi. What matters is that whatever language you choose to communicate in, you should be very comfortable and fluent in that language and you should not have to switch between languages in the middle of your speech. That is what they care about. So yes, Hindi is also completely fine, provided you stick to Hindi and not Hinglish. And so don't change languages and switch your vocabulary in the middle of your introduction or your answers because then it becomes pretty unprofessional and it sounds a little too casual to be pageant appropriate. At the same time, what you should remember is that you can choose to communicate in Hindi. In fact, Suman Rao herself did that while answering one of her finale questions back in 2019. So another etiquette tip here is that if the question being asked to you is asked in Hindi, then you should only respond in Hindi. And the same goes for English. So you always respond back 
in the language that the judge or the host or whoever is talking to you is communicating in it's just good manners to do that so if the person has asked you a question in hindi it's nice to answer in hindi and not in english because that's just good etiquettes that are being taught however for the long term you also have to keep in mind that if you are not fluent in english then you become a liability for the organization because they will have to provide you a translator at the international pageant which means that you will be more expensive compared to another contestant who is comfortable in english and at the same time they cannot have translators in media interviews and press conferences and so for that reason they always prefer to have a candidate who can speak in english comfortably because that is the global language being followed the next question is how long or high should our heels be that we have to wear for the audition rounds pretty interesting question back in 2018 or 19 both years when i competed we were specifically told by the femina miss india organizations and that rule has been consistent till now the minimum height of your heels for the femina auditions has to be 4 inches and it has to be stilettos wedges and block heels are not preferred and the last question that i would love to take up is being asked by nisha she's asking does having a professional shoot done or being a model is any of these things necessary for cracking the auditions so i would like to say that having a professional shoot done is obviously important because your portfolio pictures that you submit on the form are one of your first impressions on the femina team so it's extremely important to have good pictures whether they are shot from a phone or a camera does not matter but they should really be good pictures now at the same time does being a professional model give you an edge yes it does give you an edge in pageants because that is what the competition is about but do you have to have had a lot of prior experience in the modeling field of commercial and professional modeling no that is not a mandatory requirement because what they are looking for is the potential and the skills for being a model but they are not looking for how much experience you have as a professional model and those two things are separate if they think that you can become a great commercial face and a good professional model provided they give you a little bit of grooming and that you have the talent and the face for it then they will prefer to select you